Hey guys, just wanted to do a video here to show you uh, why it is that Miller B storms are so difficult to forecast and why there's always uh, seems to be a region that gets uh, ripped off in them. And it's really just a matter of just simple physics. And uh, let's take a look here. It's just to say that we'll do a, uh, a uh, hypothetical situation and uh, we'll put a low down here. And then let's say that that low is going to track up like this into the Ohio Valley, Tennessee and Ohio Valley, and die out somewhere up in here. It's dying out there. And you get the transfer then of energy, transfer energy here, uh, to the coastal region, we'll say down here. And then that that's becomes the main storm then, and that comes up something like that. So we have that situation there. The storm comes up to here, transfers the energy, comes up to there. Now, look what's going on here, though, with that particular setup. There's a couple things going on where basic physics say that there has to be uh, a dry area. And uh, what, what happens is it, it's, not, it's not really a matter of, uh, you know, this storm dies out, so therefore all its snow dies and then or rain, whatever's falling. And then uh, you know, this one takes over, and so therefore that's why there's nothing in here. What's happening is is that you have rising motion over here from this storm. You have rising motion over here from this storm. So somewhere in between, you have to have sinking motion. It just it it's it has to happen. That's that's how things work. And there's going to be sinking back here. There's going to be sinking out here. So everything balances out. That's how things. That's just how things work. And uh, so wherever these sinking areas. Um, end up being is where you're going to have the ripoff zones. Now, it's basically impossible to know ahead of time where that's going to be. You know, is it going to be in here? Is it going to be in here? You know, it, it's, it's just, it's impossible to know where that's going to be. So that's why, I mean, you just have to put out a general forecast uh, for these types of storms with a, you know, blanket area of, you know, two to four, three to six, whatever you're forecasting. But really, when you go into it, you know that there's going to be some corridor that's going to get ripped off. So basically, you're making a forecast knowing there's going to be an area that's going to bust horribly on it. But there's really nothing you can do because, like I said, it's just impossible to know ahead of time exactly where those dry slots are going to be. You can know climatologically where it's going to be, but it's very dangerous to you know, think, okay, well, this is, you know, this is normally where the... Uh, where the uh, the dry slot is so therefore you know instead of three to six in this area I only predict one to three and then they, uh, they end up with six and then you know it, it ends up you know people go out and think it's not going to be bad and they end up getting stuck in the snow or something so you have to put out the general forecast and then just um, now cast it as you go along so that's why it's so difficult with Miller B storms and that's why there always seems to be areas with a bust in it because uh, of the compensating subsidence so just wanted to uh, do that for you guys and I uh, hope you're enjoying whatever snow you're getting if you're getting the snow I hope you are uh, and uh, talk to you later bye